Hi, ArcfieldWeather.com meteorologist Paul Dorian here on Monday morning, August the 12th. We have a strong tropical wave over the Atlantic Ocean. It looks like it'll intensify pretty rapidly over the next couple of days, rather quickly uh, becoming a named tropical storm. That would be Ernesto. And I think by the middle of the week, let's say Wednesday, Wednesday night, Thursday time frame, it uh, reaches hurricane status. At that per particular time, it looks like it'll have an impact on the island of Puerto Rico. It then kind of curves to the north and ultimately to the northeast and heads towards the island of Bermuda. Then it might make a little bit of a turn back to the north and west, and uh, certainly all eyes in New England will be on it after that point in time when it t takes a turn to the north and west, probably still not going to reach the U.S. East Coast, but it's something we'll, of course, monitor closely over the next several days. And during this video discussion, we'll go through some of the key players in the upper part of the atmosphere that will play a role in the ultimate path of what will become Ernesto. Right now, located in this region right here, moving rather quickly, about 30 miles per hour to the west. And its latest observation has maximum sustained winds at uh, 30 miles per hour. Uh, again, I think it undergoes some rapid intensification over the next 24, 48 hours or so, first of tropical storm status, and then about the time it impacts Puerto Rico, I think, uh, uh, hurricane status by late Wednesday, Wednesday night time frame. The National Hurricane Center still has it as a tropical storm. By the time it impacts Puerto Rico, which is yellowed right here, on this particular map. I think, in fact, it could become a hurricane by the time it impacts Puerto Rico. Again, we're talking maybe late Wednesday, Wednesday night time frame. Continues to intensify as it turns to the north and ultimately the northeast. Here is the island of Bermuda. And I think it's entirely possible that Ernesto becomes a major hurricane somewhere out in this part of the uh, Atlantic Ocean. We'll see about that over the next several days. But then it may take a turn to the north and west at this particular time period. Certainly all eyes in New England will be uh, focused in on that possible turn. Probably still uh, not going to make it all the way to the U.S. East Coast, but we'll talk about some of the key players involved in the upper part of the atmosphere during this video discussion. Well, let's take a look at last night's zero Z run of the GFS. Again, this is uh, the forecast map here from the zero Z run for this morning. Strong upper level trough over New England. Very pleasant air mass reached the Mid Atlantic region for the up for the past week, and looks like much of the remainder of the week will be quite comfortable indeed across the Mid Atlantic and Northeast U.S. And we'll move forward here in time and uh, watch a couple of different troughs the upper part of the atmosphere that may play a role. Here is the reflection of 500 millibars at midweek for Ernesto. I think it'll be a little bit farther to the north. And this is Puerto Rico right here, likely to have an impact in Puerto Rico on that Wednesday, Thursday time frame, and perhaps as a Category 1 hurricane at that particular time. And then comes this influence here by this trough that's over the western Atlantic by the time we get to Thursday night, Friday morning. Basically, it's, it's going to try to pull this to the north and uh, it may become, it may interact with that initial trough. Now, there is an outside chance that that trough moves on by and kind of leaves this behind. And then there's a second trough upstream that uh, could play an important role. Here we are into the early part of the upcoming weekend. So we have a trough here and a trough here and the, uh, the hurricane reflected at the 500 millibar uh, level right in this area. And watch what happens at this particular time. It kind of is left behind by this trough. And then you quickly have a ridge of high pressure building in right here over southeastern Canada. By the way, Bermuda is right about this speck right here. And what can happen here at this particular time with this ridge starting to build in, by the end of the upcoming week and the early part of next week, this again can take a turn to the north and west, uh, seemingly towards New England, but again, unlikely right now to ever reach the New England coastline. So it kind of turns to the north and west with that suddenly building in ridge here to the north and east. But then this next trough kind of uh, moves in and let's say, uh, in a way, pushes it back out to sea. So again, we have a 
uh, a couple of troughs, and in between there will be an, a, an important ridge over the southeastern part of Canada. These are the upper air players to watch closely over the next uh, several days here. By the time we get to the middle of next week, we still have this upper level trough over the Great Lakes. And really, uh, much of August looks rather comfortable across the Mid-Atlantic region, the Midwest, uh, with uh, cooler than normal air masses moving in, maybe near normal air masses moving in uh, on a pretty frequent basis over the next couple of weeks, all backed up by upper level troughiness. And again, this is a week from this Wednesday. This is the middle of next week, August 21st. Speaking of those temperatures, let's take a look here at the 850 millimeter temperature anomalies. We're looking at the North American viewpoint here from, from the uh, Zero Z GFS. A very, very pleasant air mass this morning. Extends all the way from New England to the Mid Atlantic, the Mid West and into the Central and Northern Plains. It was indeed a very comfortable weekend throughout much of this part of the nation. And just kind of quickly run through this and watch, uh, especially focus on this area right here where we'll have multiple pleasant air masses coming in. This is all the way now into Thursday of this week and uh, no, no extreme heat, maybe above normal across the Rocky Mountain states, but certainly no extreme heat in the, uh, at least for a sustained period of time in the eastern half of the nation for the remainder of the week. Here we go into the upcoming weekend. And again, still kind of similar to today, a, a stretch of cooler than normal weather conditions from uh, the mid-Atlantic out across the Midwest. And this kind of pattern repeats itself for much of August. Here we go now into next week. This is a week from tomorrow, August 20th. And look at this, another widespread cooler than normal air mass dropping into the middle of the nation by the middle of next week. It does stay uh, hot out across the Rocky Mountain states in the western U.S. But again, from the eastern half of the nation, looks like much of August will be rather comfortable indeed with these cooler than normal air masses, maybe near normal at times, and no sustained extreme heat for the eastern half of the nation over the next couple of weeks. Well, let's wrap up with the surface forecast maps from last night's Zero Z GFS model run. We'll go forward here rather quickly in time here. And again, by the middle of the week, I think this the tropical system will have an impact on Puerto Rico, probably a little bit farther to the north than what is depicted here by the model, and maybe, uh, uh, again, may reach Category 1 hurricane status by the time it impacts directly uh, Puerto Rico, late Wednesday, Wednesday night time frame. And then it starts to make that turn to the north, and it will uh, intensify. And again, it could, there's an outside chance that it becomes a major hurricane right in this part of the Atlantic Basin here uh, by the uh, early part of the weekend. B uh, Bermuda is located right here, that little dot right there. And again, a very strong hurricane at this particular time, perhaps even a major hurricane. And this is where we have one trough over the western Atlantic, another trough over the Great Lakes, and a building ridge in between. And watch the track of this storm at this particular time. It goes to the north and then suddenly starts to veer off to the north and west and certainly that would be a concern for all residents along the New England coastline but ultimately it looks like that second trough will kind of inhibit it from making it all the way back to the U.S. east coast. Of course we'll continue to closely monitor that over the next several days and at this time it then ends up over the Canadian Maritimes. This is all the way out to the middle part of next week and here it is what will be soon named Ernesto all the way out here by the Canadian Maritime Provinces by uh, a week from this Wednesday. So continue to closely monitor this latest tropical system in the Atlantic Basin. That's it for now for ArcfieldWeather.com. This has been meteorologist Paul Dorian.